about Kathy Wood. Um, she just put out a video on how, you know, the, the basically the bull market is broadening. She put this, she had an interview yesterday on CNBC, just to give you some context. And she talked about how, like, hey, uh, you know, everybody on CNBC was like, oh, Tesla's down. Why are you so, you know, shit. I knew it was a bad stock, whatever. And you're worried. Uh, you have so much exposure to all these yeah. growth stocks. I mean, all your <laughs> ETFs are down. 139 out of your 164 stocks are, you know, dipping hard. What are you going to do? Exactly. It's, it, it it's a bubble. It, it, exactly how people are freaking out. And then, you know, people are selling out of these companies like Tesla and growth and they're buying stocks like Coca-Cola, Bo- uh, a little bit of Boeing, you know, basically the, the, the stocks that are, what are we calling them? The reopening stocks? I forgot the name. That we're rebound. Calling, the rebound stocks. Rebound yeah. Stocks. Yeah. So let's watch this video real quick on her talking about Joining this. Joining us now for a first on CNBC interview is ARK Invest CEO, Kathy Wood. Kathy, welcome back to the show. Good to have you. Great to be here, Sarah. Thank you. It's been amazing to watch your rise and your funds rise over the last year, and yet the past few weeks have been absolutely brutal. The ARK Innovation ETF down 31% from from the recent highs. How concerned are you about these rising interest rates and what that's doing to a lot of your high growth companies and the questions about valuations? Sure. Uh, Well, we've been struck that uh, the market never priced in 0.51 or 1.5 percent interest rates. Uh, we think the market never believed interest rates would stay down here. And so it, it over time, we believe, has used sort of a normalized three to five percent. Uh, so we, we don't think that is why the market is uh, correcting here. We do think the speed of the increase in interest rates is scaring people. Uh, it became very comfortable in a low interest rate environment, nothing much changing, the Fed has our back and so forth, uh, to to become involved with the market. And I think uh, this has shaken uh, a lot of investors up, maybe perhaps. And uh, I would say even in the bond market in particular, we've been in a 40 year bull market in bonds. So I think there's a lot of uh, confusion and uh, I, I think there's a little bit of paralysis here. I also think that uh, there is a very rapid rotation now into value stocks. We've seen energy up year to date, uh, 39%, financials up about 16%. Uh, those are traditional value sectors. Uh, and so I think that's been part of the reason for ARC's uh, setback. But if I could add a little perspective to this, This happened to us in the fourth quarter of 2016 as well. Uh, Right after uh, President Trump was elected, uh, the stock market took off because tax rates were going to go down and so forth. And so the market started pricing in a very strong cycle, uh, which was correct. Uh, In that period of time, our, our strategies went negative. And what I said at the time and what I believe now is that the bull market was broadening out to incorporate value or more cyclical sectors. And I thought that was going to be very good news for our strategy longer run. The worst thing that could have happened to us was another tech and telecom type bubble where the market narrowed, narrowed, so that only a few groups won. Uh, Right now, the market is broadening out. And we think in an underlying sense, the bull market is strengthening and that will play to our benefit over the longer term. Okay. So, so almost like weeding out. Yeah. I mean, it's becoming less risky. I mean, it's, it's in a, in a sense because she was saying the 10 year treasury bu- bill, um, you know, it, it's growing like as we'll, we'll pull it up here. If we'll look at the chart, basically this was, so that video was uh, on March 8th. Today's March 9th. The day of this recording is March 9th. Everyone, Bond yields hit 1.61%, the highest it had ever hit. So so Tesla was at $550, which is one of ARK's biggest holdings. 10%. So, But that coming down from the price of 800 over a course of three weeks is a good thing because it de-risks your investment. Realistically, when stocks are only going up and only going to the moon, it becomes more risky to hold that stock because you nev- that crash could be imminent. And when the and that's what she means that the the bull run for the growth sector is broadening, 
it means it's just becoming less risky. So in a sense, this is a very positive outlook as Kathy would just describe. And also after these, after today, the bonds went down. The, the Fed had a auction. They were auctioning off some bonds. Today they were selling bonds and it did very well. And for those of you simply, just, just to understand, we won't get into the mechanics of it, but when bonds sell very well, a lot of people want them, the yields, the interest rate, what you get paid out for owning that bond goes down. So that's a positive thing. People in Japan, people in South Korea, people in the United States have been buying these bonds uh, and it went down. So it's, it's a terrific thing for growth stocks because now it, it's chilling out. The bonds are chilling out. The stocks have already, the growth stocks that were intense valuations have also come down, de-risked, broadened in a sense. And now growth has come back. Tesla today had one of its best days that it's had since I believe October. Let's look at Tesla stock. It just bounced, I believe, 15% in a day today. And that's, that's a pretty big move for a company like Tesla. And we kind of needed this correction, right? The, the growth stock market was just, it was going up way too much without a correction. And when a correction happens, uh, people, you know, there's FUD, there's fear of uncertainty and death. But what people, people don't understand is that these stocks need a consolidation period. We need a breather for them to actually develop more value and kind of solidify that value and price in that value in order for it to keep going back up. So with the bonds... Uh, decreasing now growth stocks are going to see an increase mainly due to the relationship between the two right so people with a lot of money they want to put their uh, money to work and make them more money so they can hedge against inflation but they want to do that in the safest way possible so what really is the safest way when it comes to bonds and growth stocks well when bond yields are higher um that is a lot safer, right? Yeah, because that the affects the the growth stocks pretty much because it's like becomes more safe. You get more money for holding your government. Your your you get more money for holding your money with the government. And you can always trust the government. Trust the government to pay you back. At least the United States government, right? Not necessarily. Right, we yeah. we don't know about any other treasury bills, but the U.S. Uh, treasury bill is the safest because the the world's currency. It, the reserve currency of the world is the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. So that's that's also a very good sign. And so the more attractive that bonds become, it makes sense that growth stocks are going to suffer a little bit in their price. They're going to have a dip. Uh, that's where, you know, you might see a good opportunity to actually buy the dip because as bonds, it, it's, it's, it's like a... It's a inverse relationship. It's an inverse relationship. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, bonds are going up, maybe get into growth. Growths are going up, maybe start getting into bonds. Or actually, maybe not getting into bonds. Yeah, we don't need... I mean, people like us, like people our age, young people who don't have many wrinkles on their faces and no many, not many gray hairs, right. growth is the best place to be. And use be pretty, preferably being in stocks is also fantastic. Kathy Wood also alluded in this interview, talking about how the whole 60-40 portfolio split is kind of outdated and how you might want to make 60% equities, meaning stocks, and 20% uh, bonds, and then 20% crypto, like Bitcoin. She alluded to that fact, and hey, I wouldn't disagree with her. It's hard to bet against Kathy Wood, especially after her incredible returns. I'd that say it's a good level of, di of diversification. I mean, don't take our advice. We're not financial advisors. Right. You will lose money, but... Yeah, don't listen to anything we have to say. Exposure to crypto, exposure to growth stocks at a high level, I think are a pretty safe bet right now in current uh, in the current temperature of the market. Uh, bonds definitely have some exposure, but I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about bonds unless, you know, you have a good sum of money that you want to put into a safe investment. Yeah, bonds are big money. I mean, That's like government style money. That's like billionaire money yeah. where you just like want to keep it safe. And I mean, if we're talking about inflation, at least in the United States, that Jerome Powell has reported repeatedly said he's not going to raise rates he might raise them later but he's not going to raise rates and bond yields being at 1.5 percent he says that inflation they're trying to keep it around two percent to two and a half percent 1.5 percent a year over 10 years isn't really going to outpace inflation so no. it's not even that great of an investment 
either way, like you're losing half a point to 1%, you know, every year against inflation. Now, if inflation slows down, then, well, that's also not very good either because we're kind of deflating. We might be deflating or we might be just going sideways and that affects asset prices. So asset prices being stocks, real estate, it's just everything it's not very good that's and that's kind of a deal leveraging and it's not necessarily the most positive so if you if these people with a lot of money are actually losing money if they go into bonds with the current inflation rate where would they what would be the next safe uh haven for their large amount of money to invest in coke uh, coca-cola coca-cola has a great dividend yield yes. it's a company that has been around for a long time. Everybody loves Coca-Cola. Also McDonald's. McDonald's is a great value play too. They pay out a dividend. Let's see. And exactly. Disney, right? Dis doesn't Disney? Disney, I, Disney, I believe they, I don't know if they removed their dividend, but let's just, uh, but they're more of like a growth and value play because they. Yeah, Disney's interesting. Yeah, Disney is great because they're in the streaming. They're always innovating. Let's see. Their, let's see Coca-Cola's dividend. So their dividend is 42 cents. Oh, so it's 3.3% a year. So, hey, if you're trying to beat inflation and make some money on the side, 3.3% a year isn't half bad, um, especially when inflation is at 2%, 2.5%. So you're making at least 1.3% to 70, 0.7% a year, something like that. And my math is probably, it's, I'm really bad at math. But still, it's decent. Um, then you have Pepsi. Pepsi is also a good one. These are basically the stocks that people are talking about value stocks. When people, t when you see on the news all the time, CNBC, oh, there's a rotation, there's a rotation out of growth and into value. They're talking about this. They're talking about people are selling their Tesla. People are selling, you know, big hedge funds, big money, selling their Tesla. They're selling their Ubers. They're selling, you know, all these stocks that pretty much are growth stocks, the ones that don't necessarily pay out a dividend and aren't really making profit. Stocks that basically have their priced in, um, uh, futuristic values right? right so whatever they're promising to deliver in the next five or ten years whereas in the opposing types of stocks like coca-cola or pepsi they've they've already established themselves they're consistently they're, making money exactly their proof of concept is done their proof of everything is done they've have a great track record and now they're just so growing gradually they're not explosively growing i think the main point to take away from this specific topic is just that don't just have your money. I mean, whoever you are, no matter who you are, don't just have your money sitting in a bank account. Um, there are a, I mean, because ultimately inflation is going to get the best, going to get the best out of that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're going to lose money in the long run. So you, you're better off just keeping your money in some sort of uh, investment that is going to hedge against inflation because inflation will eat you alive. Yeah, a savings account is only offering you like what half a percent, a That's third nothing. of a percent. That's nothing. Come on, you can do better than that. Yeah, you, I mean, listen to you, this podcast. I know you can do better than I that. I mean, McDonald's is giving you two point four seven. Coca Cola three point three. Like these are great interest rates on your money just by, and then you get a stock, so and they're relatively safe. I mean, for Coca Cola or McDonald's to plummet in price, I mean something. It would, there would be a, have to be a fundamental change in our taste buds. <laughs> exactly. For, and we'd have to, yeah. and, and, and even then, McDonald's is partnering up with Beyond Meat. Mm -hmm. If you haven't heard that news, it's a big move for both companies. You know, one... Wait, they're partnering? I thought McDonald's came out with their own competitive... Uh, a while ago, their own, like, style... Mc, the Mc, the no, Mc McDonald's is uh, partnering with Beyond Meat. Let me just pull that up. Uh, McDonald's and Beyond Meat Partnership. Beyond Meat expands. Oh, Walmart. Uh, <laughs> wait, no. Strikes partnership with McDonald's and Yum Brands. Let's go. All right. So Beyond Meat strikes partnership with McDonald's and Yum Brands. They when released that on it? their earnings date. That was February oh, okay. 26. Was so that was a couple weeks ago. Okay. Um, yeah, it was like two weeks ago. So that's huge. So they're. I guess their own version of the veggie burger didn't do so hot. I know they came out with their own version. Back in 2020, Burger King. No, no, Burger King is actually using Beyond Meat. Really? Oh, well, there you go. So Beyond Meat partnering with McDonald's, another great play. So we'll see how that partnership goes.